today. Let the games begin. Candidates begin the race for a spot on Lethbridge City Council. Plus, a trial data set for an officer charged with assault. And Kenyan college students speak out on the terrorist attacks in their home country. CTV News with Jackie Scandlebury. Good afternoon. The municipal election race is officially on. Today is the day candidates had to register to run in next month's municipal election. As it stands now, 55 names will appear on the ballot for the positions of Lethbridge City Councillor, School Board Trustee and Lethbridge Mayor. Jeanette Rocher has more on who we'll see on the ballot next month. <laughs> It's normally a quiet corridor, but this morning, the second floor of City Hall was a flurry of activity. Handshaking, coffee clutching, and schmoozing, it's nomination day. And for 55 people, it meant the deadline to submit their nomination packages and announce their intention to run for City Council, School Board Trustee, and Mayor of Lethbridge. It's a wonderful morning. I'm extremely excited and privileged and honored to be able to put my nomination forms in for mayor. Up until this morning, the race for mayor was between three candidates, Bridget Mearns, Chris Spearman, and Farron Ellis. But that race now sits at four, with newcomer Curtis Simpson making his official announcement this morning. First time running, yeah. Um, I've been talking to a lot of people uh, over the last couple of weeks and they're very discouraged with the uh, candidates that are floating around right now. Um, so I've decided to offer a fresh perspective. Simpson says he hopes to appeal to the average Joe and the underrepresented, in particular students and seniors. In contrast, Farron Ellis says his experience as city alderman over the past three years will make him the best leader. This election should be about the basics. It should be about taxes. It should be about roads. It should be about infrastructure and uh, how we uh, plan and develop uh, the community. And on October 21st, voters will once again see Chris Spearman's name on the ballot. Spearman spent 18 years as school board trustee, then ran for mayor three years ago. I'm hoping that uh, this time we can be successful and convince uh, Lethbridge voters that I speak for them. After candidates drop off their nomination forms here at City Hall, they're officially sworn in by the city clerk. Now they have until noon tomorrow to back out of this race. After that, though, it's official. Yeah. Jeanette Roche, CTV News, Lethbridge. In addition to the four candidates Jeanette told us about who are running for mayor, 29 nominees are vying for eight city council positions. That could seem like a lot, but the record number of candidates was back in 2001 when there were 35 candidates running. There were 30 council candidates in the last municipal election. Terms now are four years. That's up from three years. Tomorrow we'll have more about the school board trustee positions. You can also check those out, though, on our CTV Lethbridge Facebook page for a full list of candidates. And there will be a lot of familiar names on the county of Lethbridge. That's because all seven councillors will return for the next four years. Because there was no opposition, no election is needed, everyone was acclaimed. Council will meet later in October to be sworn in and vote for Reeve and Deputy Reeve. Now four people are vying for the mayor's chair in Medicine Hat, including incumbent Norm Boucher. He'll be challenged by a pair of sitting aldermen, Ted Clugston and Phil Turnbull, as well as a local businesswoman, Milvia Bowman. Fifteen people are battling it out in Medicine Hat for one of their eight councillor positions. Incumbents Robert Dumanowski, John Hamill, Graham Kelly, Les Pearson are all running for another term. Newcomers include two former council members, Bill Cox and Julie Friesen, as well as Jim Black, Mike Davis, Kathy Glasgow, Caitlin Claussen, Barry Nodal, Jamie McTosh, Selena Simmons, Jim Turner, and Brian Varga. Again, Election Day is Monday, October the 21st. Welcome to fall, and we're in for a bit of a reality check, Dory, from what we've been seeing in the forecast. Yeah, we are 2.44 yesterday afternoon. Fall officially arrived here, and yes, we are going into kind of an up and down week, but then by the weekend, it's a return to, uh, you know, really nice and mild temperatures, as you'll see in the five-day forecast. So a little bit of shower on the way, a little bit of sunshine on the way, a little bit of everything. I'll tell you all about it in a couple of minutes. Thank you, Dory. A three-day trial has been set for a Lethbridge police officer charged with assault. Constable Dave Easter is charged with assault, causing bodily harm stemming from an arrest last May. Police say during the arrest of a 20-year-old man for public intoxication, Constable Easter 
struck the man, causing him to fall to the ground and then hit his head. Easter has been relieved of his duties with pay pending the outcome of the trial. That is set for February 4th, 5th and 6th. And Lethbridge Regional Police are investigating a hit and run outside a popular nightclub over the weekend. It happened in front of Studio 54 in downtown Lethbridge. A pedestrian was crossing the street and was hit by an oncoming vehicle, which then left the scene. The victim is recovering in hospital with serious injuries. Police are asking if anyone has video or photos from the incident, please contact them. A terrorist attack in Kenya has hit close to home for a number of international students attending Lethbridge College. At least 62 people are dead and dozens are still unaccounted for after terrorists stormed a busy shopping mall Saturday afternoon. For Kenyan students studying in Lethbridge, the news from home is disturbing and unsettling. Terry Vogt reports. Phyllis Awando is hoping her studies at Lethbridge College will lead to a career in marketing. But right now her mind isn't totally focused on school. She's also thinking about family and friends back home in Kenya. At first I was very scared, of course very shocked. I didn't know whether my family was okay, and so I had to call, I had to text. For Owondo and other Kenyan students, a terrorist attack on the busy Westgate shopping mall has hit close to home. Yeah, it's so sad. It just, feels, uh, it just makes you like feeling uh, like you want to cry. Edwin Katani says he knows a kid from his village who works at the mall. If he got injured in the attack or if he's still alive, I can't know any news about it. My family members, they are in the military and some of them, they were injured too. So I don't know who were injured because they kept it like secret. Shadrick Yekon says he's been watching the television coverage but is anxiously waiting for details. Many of the Kenyan students say they've been to the shopping mall. Some say they would often hang out there. They say there was always the threat of violence, but when it did happen, it came as a complete shock. Oh yeah, it was unbelievable because like everybody's, uh, the security there is very high. These students say all mall visitors had to pass through scanners, that pictures and video were strictly prohibited. They describe it as an upscale shopping center a place Phyllis Owando loved to visit on Saturdays. And so it was quite shocking actually when I had that incident took place right there. I mean, it would have been me who was there probably doing my shopping or, you know, just hanging out with friends. So it was really shocking and very scary actually. Terry Vote, CTV News, Lethbridge. Lethbridge College currently has 14 students from Kenya. The Insurance Bureau of Canada says the floods in June are the costliest natural disaster in Canadian history. IBC estimates insured losses exceed $1.7 billion. It adds more than 200 or 25,000 claims have been filed so far. IBC calls it a staggering number. Now, what was a big fear during the flooding back in June has actually happened in China. A two-ton hippo escaped from a zoo when typhoon hit, it's now in a river nearby. Zoo officials say the hippo was able to swim over the guardrails as the rainwater rose more than six feet high. So far, those efforts to lure the hippo back to its enclosure haven't been working. A seal and two turtles also escaped. Thousands were drawn downtown over the weekend to check out the word on the street. Craters gap disbelief as wind wafts across destruction. Poets, authors and bookworms alike took their word to the public at the third annual Word on the Street Festival. The Outdoor Street Festival is growing every year. It attracted thousands of people and featured live author readings, a songwriting workshop, live music and a children's area with over 40 exhibitors in total. The Word on the Street is a national celebration advocating literacy and the written word. As the library, we are all about words and literacy and story, which we think is really important. Um, and in this time of heading back to school, I think this is a great opportunity for everybody to come out and not only um, think about the learning side of things, but also think what you can get out of words for pleasure and fun as well. Organizers say the festival is growing in popularity. Over 4,300 people attended this year's event. The public library would like to thank everyone for all of their support. A park in the city's south got some sprucing up over the weekend. 
30 new trees were planted by 20 volunteers in Gyro Park as TD Canada celebrates its third annual Tree Days. Local TD branches work with Tree Canada and the city of Lethbridge to make sure trees they plant will live and thrive. Previously, trees have been planted at the Nicholas Sharon Park and Adams Park. This year, Gyro Park was chosen because of the old age of the trees in the park. Gyro Park is absolutely a beautiful park uh, and has so much heritage around it, uh, but you see a bunch of mature 40-year-old trees uh, that eventually will, will die. And, and today, you know, we can take the 20 volunteers that came out and plant 30 new trees in this park that are going to grow and thrive and replace and help beautify and keep Lethbridge a, a nice green community. To date, over 80,000 trees have been planted across the country. This year, TD employees and volunteers planted 45,000 as part of the company's environmental incentive. Now, following the recent flooding, three local residents wanted to say thank you to all the local first responders. Sure, thank you. You have a good one. David Swain, his wife Eva, and their friend Deanna Galabos hosted a charitable barbecue over the weekend to say thank you to all the police, fire and DMS for the continual service they provide us. The idea to say thank you came while watching flood coverage and seeing the committed first uh, the committed efforts of our first responders. Organizers say they just wanted to say thanks. So I want to say it and I want the city to say it. I want them to stand up. Remember the policemen, the firemen, the ambulance, the RCMP, the sheriff, EMS, Red Cross. These people are there for us all the time, without question, without hesitation. I want to stand up and say thank you. Pretty cool way to say thank you. Just over $800 was raised and will be donated to the Red Cross. A major development today with BlackBerry, Fairfax Financial Holdings has inked a deal to buy the Waterloo, Ontario-based company for $4.7 billion. Trading in BlackBerry stock was halted today just before the deal was announced. Fairfax is offering $9 a share for the company. BlackBerry has gone through an enormous amount of turmoil recently. Friday it was announced it was cutting 4,500 jobs. That's about 40% of its workforce globally. Time now for a look at the day's markets.